Ever since bubble play began for the NBA in the summer of last season, it just seems like the Phoenix Suns have been a totally different team all around. Before the undefeated run in the tail end of last season, I and many other fans everywhere were led to believe that this team hit a dead end and that Devin Booker should force his way out. Instead of quitting, Booker and the Suns have shown that they really want to build a winning culture again and by trading for Chris Paul, not only did they finally put a capable point guard next to Devin Booker and DeAndre Ayton, the Phoenix Suns have now positioned themselves amongst the top eight teams in the Western Conference. Something that unfortunately nobody could have said in over 10 years, despite the Phoenix Suns finishing with a 48 and 34 record in 2014 and yet still missing the playoffs thanks to the usually stacked Western Conference. Although the NBA looked very different in the 2009-2010 season, Due to the players, the era, and overall style of play across the league, basketball still had big names that are still playing today 11 years later. Over 30 players who played back then are still playing today. The first overall draft pick this season would be Blake Griffin out of Oklahoma. After missing all of his first season, Griffin would later come back the following year and win Rookie of the Year. The next four picks after Griffin, however, would be Hashim Thabi, James Harden, Tariq Evans and Ricky Rubio. Tariq Evans would be the one who would win Rookie of the Year by averaging 20 points, 6 assists, and 5 rebounds while shooting 46% from the field, only 26% from 3, and 75% from the free throw. Unfortunately for him, this year would prove to be the best of his career despite not being one of the 6 players in his draft class to receive an All-Star selection. As for Phoenix, their draft class this season included Earl Clark out of Louisville with the 14th pick, Taylor Griffin from Oklahoma with the 48th pick, and lastly, Amir Prelzic with the 57th pick. Clark was a bench player at best, while the other two wouldn't last any longer than a season. The Suns by this time were known as one of the best teams in the league, making the Western Conference Finals twice under former head coach Mike D'Antoni. The Suns were looking to finally make it to the Finals under new head coach Alvin Gentry. After taking over for Terry Porter, this would be Gentry's first full season with the Phoenix Suns. The Suns will finish 54 and 28 with third place in the West. After going to the All-Star break with a 31 and 22 record, Phoenix would only lose six games to finish the season. The leading scorer on this fun and enjoyable team to watch was 27 year old Amari Stoudemire with 23 points along with nine rebounds and a block a game. Steve Nash would be the runner-up with 17 points, 11 assists, and 3 rebounds. Those two would both make the All-Star team as well. Jason Richardson wasn't too far behind in points, also with 16 points, 5 rebounds, and 2 assists. This Suns team also had the 4th fastest pace while scoring the most points a game with 110 a night. An average that would be in the bottom half of the NBA today. That's how fast the game has become. By finishing 3rd in the West, the only teams above Phoenix would be the Dirk Nowitzki-led Dallas Mavericks and a Lakers team led by Kobe Bryant looking to repeat. The MVP this year will be LeBron James, averaging 30 points, 7 rebounds, and 9 assists while leading the Cleveland Cavaliers to a 61-21 record, the best in the NBA, would help him win the award for the second year in a row, all while being just 25 years old. It would be a 21-year-old Kevin Durant who would end up being the scoring leader. Dwight Howard will lead the NBA in rebounding with 13 a game, along with winning Defensive Player of the Year for the second year in a row. Steve Nash's 11 assists per game would prove to be the best in the league. Aaron Brooks will win Most Improved Player by playing all 82 games for Houston, averaging 20 points, 5 assists, and 2 rebounds while shooting 43% from the field and 40% from 3. And Jamal Crawford, who was with the Atlanta Hawks at the time, would win six man of the year, averaging 18 points, three assists, and three rebounds, while shooting 45% from the field and 38% from three. Being the third seed in the West, the Phoenix Suns will meet an up and coming Portland Trail Blazers team led by Brandon Roy and Lamarcus Aldridge. Unfortunately for Brandon Roy, he would be out for most of the series as injuries really deterred his entire career. Portland would actually steal game one led by a 31-point performance by Andre Miller, but the Suns would immediately take back two straight games. Portland would win Game 4, 
which would be where Roy returned, but it proved to be too late as the Suns would close out the series in six games. A seven-seeded San Antonio Spurs team would be the Suns' second round matchup. The Suns were able to sweep the Spurs despite three of the four games being won by less than 10 points. The Western Conference Finals was a very familiar position for Phoenix, and this time, they'd be met by the Los Angeles Lakers. The Lakers proved from the very start in games one and two who the better team was and would eventually win in six games. Los Angeles would then beat the Celtics in the finals in game seven, with Kobe Bryant winning finals MVP, averaging 29 points, eight rebounds, and four assists, while also getting his fifth and last championship ring. Taking a look at our current Phoenix Suns team, with Chris Paul being the only player playing back then, he was in his fifth season in New Orleans at only 24 years old. Dario Saric was 16, Devin Booker and Michael Bridges was only 13 years old, and DeAndre Ayton was just 11 years old getting ready to turn 12. It seems that success and playoffs go wherever CP3 goes simply because of how great he is, and Phoenix has been the team, like the last year's OKC Thunder, to exceed expectations and to make a playoff run this year. Thank you for watching the video. If you liked the video, like and comment whether or not you knew just how long it's been since the Phoenix Suns have made the playoffs and how far they'll make it in this year's playoffs. And if you like me, subscribe.